Three banks in America have gone bust within the past month. The banks that went bust are City National Bank of New Jersey, Resolute Bank of Ohio, and Louisa Community Bank of Kentucky. But many other banks are struggling anyway, in an era of low interest rates and hot competition. The more margins stay low, the more likely banks are to move into unsuitable areas to boost them. Many companies are already carrying more debt than they can handle, while households are showing signs of strain, too. The latest survey carried out by the New York Federal Reserve, released last week, showed record high consumer loan balances and worsening delinquency trends in car loans, student loans, and mortgages. Granted, the three bust banks are just small canaries in the coal mine. It is however interesting to notice that, the last time there were zero US bank failures was 2006. In 2007 there were exactly three, just like this year. What happened the year after that? No one needs reminding, we all know what happened in 2008, don't we? Welcome to the Atlantis Report. Three bank failures open new chapter in the never-ending financial crisis. More than 10 years have passed since the collapse of Lehman Brothers, which burned almost $10 trillion in market capitalization in global equities within a month. Back then, it was determined that banks, large and small, had gotten themselves into trouble with mortgage-backed securities, the price of which turned out to be significantly overestimated. The latest bank to go bust is the City National Bank, a seven-branch bank headquartered in Newark. As of September 30, the bank had about $120.6 million in total assets and $111.2 million in total deposits. City National Bank in Newark, the only black-owned bank in New Jersey, closed November 1 after federal officials said it was losing money quickly due to unsafe or unsound practices. The Office of Controller of Currency acted after the bank experienced substantial dissipation of assets and earnings due to unsafe or unsound practices, according to a press release. It also cited the bank's failure to submit a capital restoration plan acceptable to the office. Federal officials appointed the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation FDIC, as the receiver for the seven-branch bank, according to a statement. There was no notice of the impending closure. It's the fourth bank to fail nationally this year and first to close in New Jersey since January 2017, when Harvest Community Bank in Pennsville was shuttered. 2019 bank failures begin to pick up steam as three banks failed in just one week's time this month. City National Bank has failed, Resolute Bank has failed, Louisa Community Bank and Inlow State Bank all have failed so far in 2019. There was actually zero bank failures in 2018. This is something to keep an eye on as this rush of regional bank failures gets underway. Jim Willie mentioned in a recent interview the scuttlebutt that Credit Suisse is in trouble, and what I did not know. They also have the same access to the the Fed discount window that US banks do since it is somehow incorporated here even though it's Swiss. Some such thing or other. So yeah, the Fed is definitely lender of last resort for the world. That's why the Fed is bailing out these banks at the tune of 120 billion, not million, billion a day, every day. That is a bail to these stinky bankers at 120 billion per day. The Plunge Protection Team has actually many accounts scattered across many banks. Most likely, the repo window is a way for the Fed, Treasury to fund the Plunge Protection Team banks. In addition, many different banks are in on the gold-silver suppression racket. So the Plunge Protection Team is also funding the gold-silver open contracts. The repo market is funding, via new fiat, the Fed manipulation of both the market and gold-silver. If the repo continues, and it will, the system is going to break. When that happens, the Fed will go to Congress for more, not QE. Gold, silver will go berserk, based on what happened in 2008-2009 when gold hit $1,900. Funny that in America the politicians along with their bankster bum buddies can destroy the middle class when they sold out to communist China and the globalists but the Fed is still allowed to continually bail out and subsidize the totally corrupt banking sector. No real money is going into infrastructure or other beneficial efforts. It's actually gotten so bad from an investment point of view that nobody reinvests in their companies. It all goes to the top-tier executives and share buybacks. And to top it off every taxpayer has to listen to the propaganda that the economy is the greatest ever when we all know that the GDP and U3 numbers are fake. It's a very sick two-headed party monster running the show in Washington through total manipulation. Don't forget one item which is the most important of all. 
All government numbers are now fake because of the Federal Accounting Standards Advisory Board Standard 56. They can legally give you any numbers they want for any government department for national security reasons. It's just the same as what they just did when the missing $21 trillion was found. That's on top of the current deficit and likely a lot more has been printed and used in the secret ESF or Exchange Stabilization Fund that can't be audited just like the Fed. The bloated deep state is still hanging on though. Anyone who is numerate and understands basic economics can see that we are nearing the end. As the financial economy becomes ever more detached from the real economy, polarizing wealth, there will be a backlash. The backlash will be in the form of stagflation as governments are forced to use fiscal policy to contain widespread unrest. It is this fiscal policy that will be used like US pork barrel, politics to buy off voters. The result will likely be unprecedented stagflation that the central banks are unable to contain without destroying the bond market and massive corporate defaults. In the meantime, the Fed will continue to extend and pretend as there is no exit strategy short of a miracle discovery of some as yet unknown new resource that can offset the debt. We know the Fed is waiting until November. Meanwhile, Europe has already started QE. Printing up $20 billion a month. But that's nothing compared to what is coming. The repo panic is the first step towards total chaos in a banking system that is currently on the verge of collapse. Both Deutsche Bank with their $50 trillion in derivatives and Commerce Bank are down 95%. There is no chance they will survive. Only massive money printing can keep the fiat system afloat. And when it all finally ends. The debt these banksters have created will be written off. But in a world of paper. What will all this paper debt be written off against? Written off relative to fiat paper? No. All the paper debt will be written off relative to gold, more than likely, all the paper debt will be written down 95% against gold. Anyone with half a brain can see where this is headed. The Fed had no choice but to do repos because liquidity in the system was beginning to seize up. The only time banks are making money is when they are lending it out. But the problem is, they can't lend it out fast enough to pay off the debt that is steamrolling behind them. For all intents and purposes, the banks are in a death spiral they can't escape. History indeed does repeat itself. When this happened before, in 1929, the panic caused the markets to crash, and banks called their notes due, grabbing every hard asset they could get their hands on. But today, the idea of cheap money has lured people into the biggest debt bubble in history. Money printing may delay the collapse, but it can't stop it. We are in for a rude awakening. The thing with bank runs is, they usually accelerate before there is a lockout. I'd be surprised if the banks have coverage of anything more than 1% of their total exposure. The root cause of this is derivatives, which allowed them to engage in unsafe banking practices and blow out the debt to catastrophic levels. The Glass-Steagall Act protected us until Congress finally voted it out. So we can clearly hold our elected officials responsible for this. This was all planned well in advance. QE has started in a big way. They can't let debt default, and they cannot let rates rise. QE used to be an emergency measure. But it happens all the time now. The prior round was never fully unwound, and rates were never normalized, no matter what the talking heads say. Now they're embarking on another round of QE, so in reality, this has been continuous QE since the crisis, since the balance sheet was never entirely undone. There was just a lull in the program for a few years before they went back at it again, now. It was known, and said, back at the beginning of the crisis when the Fed embarked on this, that QE would become a standard component of their toolbox, which is basically nothing but printing money, and their claim to have succeeded with the prior rounds of QE has emboldened them to think that there are no consequences to these actions, however, there are two things that should be noted. Number 1. Inflation never comes when it's to be expected, and it also doesn't always show up in ways that the Fed likes to acknowledge. Number 2. Once started, it would be unusual and difficult to ever fully undo the damage from the first rounds of QE, so don't for one minute think that now that it's begun again that it will stop. QE is here to stay. There's no way they can remove the punch bowl without the threats of a market crash, etc. They started something that cannot be stopped, and people warned about this back when Bernanke started it, that it would never end, and it won't. It was a hit job then, and it'll be a hit job this time. So they can keep this up for nearly forever, China trade deal on, off, on, off, on, off. 
rates up down qe coming back not coming back coming back not coming back you get the idea every scenario is accounted for and then the wheel is spun bets are laid down no more bets is called and then they go to work knowing in advance due to the computers and the magnets and other tech stuff exactly where to stop the wheel at maximum pain and maximum fleecing they can predict what the best outcome is both for maximum mark extraction and psychology so much, so the marks start screaming for the QE that's slowly eating the flesh of the real economy. Rinse and repeat until all real value is gone, everyone is broke except an anointed few and then bail and leave the plebes to the commies with artificial intelligence. There's no fixing this, and not just because this can't be fixed. The economic collapse is coming, once faith in the US dollar evaporates, then it will be like a Mexican standoff, everyone trying to exit through the same door. This is the end game for the unelected rulers, the international bankers have officially bankrupted the world. That was indeed their collective agenda from the get-go, to load the system with unrepayable debt whilst ensuring that every hard asset is collateralized. They control the available resources of the world at any given moment. Everything required for a restart. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.